Again, not the first time. Um, the west end of the parking lot. To my right down there uh, is the west end of the parking lot. But to the east end, we do have some coffee and donuts going down there. Uh, we've got another pot of coffee brewing, but we've got plenty of donuts down there. Please help yourself because, um, yeah, we don't want to take them home with us. picture of you and Bruce together and look at that ah you'll find that cart in noon buggies and hot VWs very cool all right I've been wanting to do this for a long time <laughs> <laughs> thank, you. Yeah. thank you thank you yeah. all right hey, well, come on up make sure you buy your tickets again we've got a lots of stuff going in for the raffle tomorrow morning uh, lots of generous uh, sponsors and donors, and um, in, in fact, right at the beginning of the driver's meeting, I will have a special...
Everybody back to Kennedy, your attention please. We got a lot of people here. I know there's a lot going on. We gotta try to get a lot of people out of this parking lot together. Line up. Captain's Anchorage is right on the other side of Walgreens right here. There's a big
new members out here for the first time on their first Manx Club event, relying on their Manx Club family. Happy, happy. happy. All right. Well, you want to talk to the people? You want to say something? About what? About what? What do you mean we're at what? How uh, many times have we stopped for you today? No, I'm honestly, I'm really happy. I was for the Max. I'm really happy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. well, we're glad you're happy. Keep on the, on the top. That's awesome. Okay, we'll pick one of these and add one of your many problems to it. Uh, okay, the green one was mine. Okay, no, and he helped you out, so you got to take this one. He's presenting you with that one. All right, there you go. Now, what you want to do is you want to add something to that, and then when you you finish that, when you come to the next event, you get to hand that to the next person. That's meaning that you didn't have a problem again, and you get to keep it. Uh, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be in the next year event, and I'm really happy. Really. Awesome. Looking forward to seeing you at the next event. That's Thank awesome. You. Thank you. Myers Banks has showed up. Uh, we got the group from Myers Banks LLC here, and they would like to take a moment. So we got Philip Serafin, Freeman Thomas. Who else is coming up with you? Just you two uh, of you just, just now? Or? Just us two. Okay. From Myers Banks LLC. How are you all, everyone? My name is Philip Serafim. Um, first off, I'm gonna say that I've had an incredible time at my first Manx Club event, and it'll be the first of many. Uh, we are looking forward to carrying on Bruce's legacy. <clears throat> and that means um, hearing uh, recommendations from you all on how we could continue to carry on Bruce's legacy in the best way possible. Um, uh, anyway, I can't wait to get back together with you all again and get back in the dirt. I'm going to pass the mic to Freeman. Okay. Hi, hi everybody. Hi. So, so I uh, got to meet so many of you today. And uh, to, for me, uh, this is a lot about how I grew up. Uh, I grew up in Huntington Beach and, and also in Cypress, California. And when I look around and look at the Manx Club, uh, you know, it's, it seems like my neighborhood, you know, it, when I see, uh, you know, what Bruce created and, you know, which is amazing. I thought I, th I think that Bruce is and always has been a genius. And the Manx Club really is what Winnie did, you know, and, and I think that with with Winnie um, creating all of you together, I think has it's, it's been an amazing thing. So I, I'd love to have a big applause for Winnie. And, you know, I tell you, um, every time that I talk to Winnie, um, I learn so much. And, and as I'm walking around and I'm listening to owners on the cars and, and the backgrounds behind the Manxes, I am learning every single day. A lot of people don't know who I am. I don't know if, if you've read about my background or anything, but um, I, I met Bruce back in the 90s. And I was the, the chief designer of Volkswagen in, in the, the California studio. And I invited Bruce into the studio. And we had actually, you know, had started a lot of kind of fun work that was a lot very Manx-like in the studio. And so I spent about two days with Bruce. And we kind of became kindred spirits at that point. We really w always stayed in contact and and I went on in my career in automotive design through the years and always saw him like up at the art center and places like that and always talked to Winnie and Bruce. And a couple years ago, a few years ago, I saw a Myers Manx coming out of the Santa Monica mountains. I had just retired from Ford. I ran advanced design uh, for Ford Motor Company. Um, and and I, I, I looked at the, the Manx and I thought to myself, there is so much magic in that mix. So, excuse me, it's a little bit emotional, but, and I know it is to you too, but anyway, so I called up Philip and I said, Philip, what do you think if we called up Winnie and Bruce and let's see what they want to do with the company? So anyways, we called up Winnie and Bruce and we started a dialogue and they had a lot of people coming towards them wanting to take over the company, but we wanted to have a great future for the company. We didn't want just to have another company. 
we wanted to bring together some really creative people that would respect what, what Bruce and Winnie had done. And, and that's, that's what we are doing. It's a lot of work. It is a lot of work to try to catch up to what Bruce and Winnie have created. And so what we're, our goal right now is to create kind of a time machine, a time machine that you can go back to when, you know, Bruce started in the 60s. And he started with that beautiful Myers Manx and went into the Myers Toad and then later into the Manxster with, with Winnie. And, you know, and, and that is the genius of what Bruce had done is so amazing. As a designer, as an industrial designer, as I study the design of what Bruce has done, he took this utilitarian Volkswagen chassis and he you know, went out to the dunes and he looked out there and there was already the burrows and there was the MPs and those cars out there. And they're great, you know, because I see them here and I really respect them and I respect the craftsmanship. But what Bruce did, he put humanity to, to a vehicle. That's very difficult to do. Something that you connect with. You know, something why we're all here today. Why all these cars are here today. Even the, 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 the people that decided to copy the, the, the Manx, you know, they, they were celebrating something great. You know, so, I, you know, I see that all the copies are welcome because they're celebrating what Bruce created. And so that's why we're emotionally connected to creating a future for Myers Manx. And so we, we've got a new facility in um, Costa Mesa, right on the Newport Beach border. It's literally a stone's throw away from where Bruce created the very original Manx down on Lido Island, and then later with Road and Track and some of the buildings around here. We wanna make it your home, a place that you feel comfortable to come into. We've already ordered 50 new bodies in every single metal flight color and, and once we have all of those, those are going to be a beautiful display so that you, you're, you're going to be not looking at color chips. You're going to be walking in and looking at bodies. We're going to have a full color studio. We have designers that will work with you to create color combinations and accessories and things like that. And we're going to make it affordable, you know, because that's one of the things that Bruce and Winnie really wanted to do is make it affordable, make it so that, that there was a level that you know, connected to everybody. So that's going to take a lot of work and we have a lot of work ahead of us. So I just wanted to introduce us and our passion for being here and being with you. And we're going to be at, at these events and we're going to help any way we can to make this an even better event. Anything that Winnie asked for, we're going to give her. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Exciting future looks like ahead. For Stand up, please. And once again, I want to thank all of our run leaders. Yeah. Britt, Britt, stand up. Britt, Danny. Britt Brit and Danny Hughes are up here. Again, we've been communicating with them for weeks now. Uh, our main contact up here, they're, again, up here pre-running the trails. You know, let me know what's going to work, what's not going to work. It's our first time out uh, with the buggy, first time in the dirt. Thought everything was good. And as it turned out, hey, everything ended up good. We're still here. We're standing. We're alive. Uh, when you're going down a hill with buggies in front of you and you got no brakes and you're yelling no brakes, um, and you're swerving to avoid everybody and here's the berm going like this. It was all good, but most importantly, um, can't say enough about the support that we got from everybody, the leaders, um, Chase guy, and uh, all the, everybody in between that brought tools up and uh, found out uh, you know, a couple of rocks and a zip ties and some tape. Um, and we were able to uh, get brakes at least to three wheels again but um, we didn't feel it was safe enough to continue on, so we came back. We thought that was the smartest choice. So we're looking forward to next time, getting everything squared away and uh, completing the run and being able to give this back to somebody else. We look forward to seeing you out on the next run. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A quiet experience that happened on, on the trip up here. And uh, it's this Manx Club family that, that 
really makes this whole experience special and understanding that support that you have for your fellow Manx Club member and what you are willing to do for that member with, without even a blink of an eye. You just, please, come on YouTube. I, I'm not going to be able to tell the story the way that you guys can tell the story and this is something that you guys will enjoy to hear. So we were with, and we saw it, and it was lit. <laughs> so we had to come around. I'd like to start with you. You can begin the story. Please introduce yourself and tell the story, and then I'll pass it on to 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 the observers and, and how that story continues. And I'll, go ahead. Uh, my name is Russ Klinor. I've been bugging since '63. Started out with Burroughs. I'm still with Burroughs. I built a lot of Tupperware cars. I call them Tupperware cars. I always did. My mom sold Tupperware. My mom sold Tupperware, so I call them Tupperware cars. Uh, sorry, not to be disrespectful. But uh, so we wanted to come up to this bash. I've been out of the, the the buggy thing for a lot of years, doing other stuff. And. Uh, I threw the buggy on, uh, rather than bringing the toy hauler, because I didn't think I had a place to park it up here, and uh, I threw it on my utility trailer, and uh, I got to about five miles from the 3.30 turnoff, and the, uh, the spindle on the axle of the trailer started melting. It was turning, it wasn't a froze bearing, I don't know what happened. But, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm a nut. Uh, so I pulled off. I pulled off the road. I saw a couple sparks flying. Pulled off the road, and I got a beautiful spot. There was an on ramp next to the freeway, and there was I was 40 foot from the, the slow lane. I was way off the freeway. I felt very safe. Stopped. We I went and and, and, and saw what was going on. So we've got to get the trailer towed out of here someplace and change the spindle. Took a picture. Uh, but before that, I unloaded the buggy because I knew the trailer was going to have to be towed away. So I unloaded the buggy off of it, took a couple other things off of it, put the buggy up on the ice ice plant in, in, in embankment, and went and showed her the pictures of what was wrong with the trailer. She was on the phone talking to AAA. Yeah, sitting in the truck, and... Uh, all of a sudden, I thought a semi hit us in the rear. Turns out it was somebody in a car doing 80 miles an hour, hit the trailer, went through the trailer, tore the trailer off the truck, totally shredded the trailer. Wow. And it was, it was a full-sided trailer and, everything, and turned around backwards in the second lane, in the middle lane, I guess it was, and uh, pushed us 65 feet. And uh, so I get out of the truck and I go back and I start, and cars were screeching, they were not seeing her. The whole front of her car was tore off and she's facing oncoming traffic. Uh, I pulled the buggy out and turned her left turn signal on so there'd be something blinking out there and started waving my arms like a net, you know, like they could see me and, and they're not even looking over the side of the road. And. Uh, <clears throat> And here comes the Cornell. <laughs> I, see, I see these two buggies on a trailer go by, and I went, I turned this into this. <laughs> you know, I turned it into that. And uh, and then uh, got the buggy out of the way. That was a better idea. And got myself out of the street. And, and, uh, and then finally the traffic started slowing down, and here came the CHP and uh, and I turned around and this lady right here we'll, we'll let them tell the story <laughs> we continue so here we are we wanted to leave town at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and that didn't happen so now it's 1 o'clock in the morning and we're driving up here and we come up on this accident and I'm like Ira it's fresh it's fresh Scanning the accident as we're trying to drive around the car in the middle lane. And I'm like, there's a buggy! They have a buggy! And he's like, there wasn't a buggy. I didn't see a buggy. And I'm like, 
It was one of the all metal ones, honey. It was one of the all metal ones. And he says, Oh, a bur a burrow? <laughs> and, and then he says, Oh, we're going oh, back. Oh, we're going to go back. <laughs> so we get off on the off ramp and we swim, swing around and we come back on the freeway and we pull up behind them. And the officers aren't even there yet. And we get off, uh, get out of the car and our kids are asleep in the car, right? They're all asleep in the most truck. Of, most, most of them. Way, Some of them were reading. And so anyway, we, we walk up and we, she's a little shook up, right? Here's this woman. She was just, we don't even know what happened. And, uh, and I looked at her and I said, can I pray with you? And here we are in the middle of the freeway praying. And then after that, we kind of get updated on what happened and the police start to arrive and the woman gets out of the car and claiming that her cousin that was driving the car um, ran up the hill and there was no cousin. She was the one that got out of the car. So anyway. That was her sister. Yeah. Sister. sister. And, and anyway, so. Okay, somebody else. Anyway, so long story short, we're like grabbing brooms out of our car and we're sweeping up the the freeway, <laughs> we're pulling all this stuff out, putting it alongside the road so it's out of the way, and um, the police are taking care of it, and, and the, the paramedics come, they're checking them out, and get them in the, in the uh, ambulance and get ready to go, and so we're like, what are you guys going to do? So the tow truck comes, and we kept saying, how can we help? Well, what can we do? How can we help? So... Um, the trailer gets towed, and it was a crazy stack of metal that you couldn't even tell it was a trailer. Absolute scrap, it was awful. And then, um, and we're like, well, can, how can we help? Like, well, first of all, I go, are you guys going to the Big Bear Run? And she goes, how did you know? <laughs> and I said, because you have a buggy. <laughs> and she's like, but how do you know? And I said, because we have two buggies. <laughs> and she's like, Oh, oh, you're buggy people. And all of a sudden there was the instant bond, right? So then um, so then we uh, were like, how can we help you? How can we help you? And long story short. So Russ, they wanted to take Russ up to the hospital. Just to make sure. <laughs> so to make a longer story longer, Russ, went, Russ and his wife went to the hospital. We brought Russ. Russ and his wife went to the hospital. And then we took the buggy up to Big Bear, and once they got back up, then we settled up in the morning and had breakfast. Listen, I know this guy loves me with all his heart. I know Can that. Get up to the family. Yeah. But to take your keys and simply put it in another man's hands after not seeing it for 40 years, a build that he did, and got it back, and just said, here you go. I was like, it had to be a buggy person. And he looked at me and he said, don't you understand? Buggy people have always been like this. This is who they are. And I approached Mike and Rich and said, there needs to be something that, about these everyday heroes, because these happen all the time. This is stories that each of you have that you can share. There has to be something because this is so unique. Yeah, absolutely. Because this is what makes all of us so unique and that we share something, a bond that other people don't have. They don't experience and they don't know. But this right here is amazing. And you look at this now as these were two separate people and now they're one family. Just because of that buggy. And the help that you give out for your buggy people. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for coming up here and sharing your story.